Hey y'all and welcome to the On Iowa podcast. I'm Leah Van, I'm your Hawkeye beat writer and today we're gonna be previewing the field hockey season with Iowa head coach, Lisa Salucci. Lisa, welcome to the On Iowa podcast. Thanks so much, Leah. Love that uh, you're having me on today and we get to talk a little bit of field hockey. Yes, a sport that I'm not as familiar with, but I watched the final four at this past season. I'm very hooked. This awesome. sounds like so much fun. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously not a, a an Iowa sport, but usually when people start to watch, they do get they do get a bit hooked. I feel like if you just sell this, like this is hockey on grass because it's very similar and it's just as much action packed. It is very action packed. Yep. Yep. Hockey on turf, only using one side of the stick. Yeah. (laughs) So first, um, just to make people like familiar with you and your background, obviously you've been around the program for 22 years, I read. Yep. Um, But yeah, how did you even get into field hockey? Where are you from? What is your background in this sport? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I grew up um, in Radnor, Pennsylvania, which is super close to Villanova University. So um, out on the East Coast, field hockey is really big in the mid-Atlantic region. Well, really up and down the East Coast, it's huge. Um, And I, to be honest, was a absolute like fan of basketball, only wanted to play basketball. But um, luckily enough, when I was in seventh grade, we had a we had a great um, mom of one of the student athletes at my school that was a college field hockey coach and player. Um, and so she introduced the sport and I checked it out and I was, I was really, really interested in it. And then literally when I got to high school, still was like, Oh, I'm going to play basketball and, uh, met this woman, Diane Monkevich, who was my high school coach. And at the time, um, didn't know this, but she actually played field hockey at Iowa. And so um, kind of the way that all really my hook getting hooked on field hockey was she took us to my first college field hockey game in 1990. Um, it, the final four was at Rutgers that year and walked up, saw this team all in black warming up. That just looked so awesome and super cool. And I'm like, who is that team? They look fantastic. She's like, that's the Iowa Hawkeyes. That's where I went to school. And from that moment, I was just hooked on Iowa and wanted to know as much as I could just about Iowa field hockey, really. That's so cool. You just, you were just exposed to the program being in Pennsylvania. You were just like, yeah, I'm just going to go for it. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And so then, yeah, put all my effort into trying to be recruited and literally came down to Iowa, Ohio State uh, and Penn State for me. And when I came out here, they're just was nothing like it. And at the time I had been to the last six straight final fours. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's where I want to go. And it was just such a unique atmosphere out here. So really came to Iowa in, in 1994. And, uh, that's kind of the, the, the start of my college career and have been here for quite a long time. <laughs> so I read that somewhere uh, you were a goalkeeper. Yes. Are you still the all time saves leader? I am. I am still the all-time saves leader. I don't know if that says that I played on some teams that conceded, uh, had some shaky defense. Uh, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> it was a little bit different different game in the late 90s, but uh, yes, 592 saves. Um, I played on some fantastic teams. We got a chance to win three Big Ten championships. We were in two Final Fours and the Elite Eight, so couldn't have asked for a way better experience than I had at Iowa. It really was awesome. I noticed that Iowa also has quite the rich history of field hockey. And I also think it's hilarious that like, it is such an East coast sport. And yet like the big 10 has some perennial programs. Like you look at Northwestern, Michigan, Iowa. Um, Yeah. I mean, you've got the Rutgers in Maryland, which you kind of expect. Sure. Why is that? I'm curious. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, hard to put your, put your finger on, especially here at Iowa. That's kind of what's so unique is why, why are we so good and have been so good for so many years. And I'll tell you, you know, I really believe it's because back in, you know, Dr. Christine Grant brought the sport here basically in, in the seventies and was the first coach and right away, just the resources that we had for field hockey in the eighties and nineties was so much better than most of the country. I mean, you know, we had our own AstroTurf facility that nobody else had um, and separate women's and men's athletic departments. And that really set up our our field hockey program, especially just to be on a different level than a lot of different sports and some fantastic coaches that did some unbelievable recruiting to try to sell people to come to Iowa. Um, and I'll tell you, 
the biggest battle in our recruiting is getting people out here. And once they come out, they're like, wow, this is, it's almost like Oz to them. Like they didn't expect it. It was going to be, you know, this type of setup, this, this great. And they feel that comfortable. And I really think, you know, field hockey has expanded in the Midwest, but we have a lot of Hawkeyes actually who have coached in the big 10 and Michigan, for example, we have a Hawkeye all American, um, an Olympian coaching, leading the Michigan program and same thing, just, fantastic coaches who are bringing great players to these schools. And now it's also my understanding that you've done some work. You played on Team USA um, yeah. for what were called Olympic festivals. Yeah. What are those? Yeah. So when you're in the in the U.S. pipeline back in the 90s, they had Olympic festivals that were kind of, you know, your way to be able to play in the United States against everybody else in, in the U.S. And then that's how they had like selection opportunities for you to go up the U.S. pipeline. And then once you made the national team, you know, you, get, you got to play overseas and play in some tournaments in that regard. So I was lucky enough to be able to do that through college. And then when I graduated, uh, moved out to Chula Vista, where the training center was and played for two years on the U.S. team and then, you know, really wanted to kind of get my start into coaching. And, that, and that's kind of how I got myself back to Iowa. So. And you still do some coaching with Team USA, is that correct? Can you explain your role there? Yeah, sure. So our, our all of our coaches are heavily involved in the, the U.S. field hockey pipeline. Um, there's lots of different opportunities, whether it be, you know, junior national team camps or just selection tournaments that we have the opportunity to work with different age groups. Um, so it is a great recruiting tool as well, but it also gives us as coaches, the opportunity to just continue to hone our skills um, and, you know, work with it with and around some different college coaches. So lots of opportunities in the summer and sometimes in the winter to be involved in different age groups. And we have a lot of Hawks uh, currently and former that um, definitely are heavily involved in the U.S. team and want to be a, a U.S. national team member and play in the Olympics. So you know, we love kind of being, being able to combine our skills and it only helps our program here at Iowa too. Yeah. I was going to say you touched on the fact that like getting people here as far as recruiting is the tough part and you are recruiting worldwide really for this sport. I mean, you've got uh, several players from like Belgium, you know, all these different countries. And so how are you able to get people out here? What does that process look like? Yeah, it's great. It's it's a lengthy process, uh, but you know what? What first and foremost, you know, we try to sell. We always sell our tradition, um, and then really our our development of players. I mean, first and foremost, our tradition is really unlike many schools in the country. I mean, there's only three or four in the country that can have the same type of final fours or number of big 10 championships or elite eights. And then really our development of players. I mean, we have 97 national Americans, you know, there's three schools in the country that have more. So we try to really put an emphasis on, Hey, you're going to come be a part of a program that we're working every day to, you know, be keepers of this legacy. Um, and we're going to do everything we can to develop you and, you know, help you achieve those goals, whether it is the U S team or the Belgian national team, or just to be, you know, an engineer or a doctor, right whatever those goals might be. And so those are, you know, two of our big selling points. And then also they love the idea of being able to come to Iowa city where there are no professional sports. So they know the Hawkeyes are the only game in town. And for a small sport like field hockey, I mean, we do get a fair amount of people out to hockey. We have a a, a legit following of people that are really invested. Um, And so they, they feel that pride and they feel like, okay, we're going to be really representing something with a lot of pride here. So before the pandemic, did like did you go abroad to recruit some of these women? And are there like specific countries you have specific relationships with and teams and stuff? Yes, yes. we we always try to see, especially the international student athletes in person before they come here. Just you know, video can be deceiving sometimes, right? So my uh, our associate head coach Michael Bull, he's from England. Um, so we have a great relationship with a lot of different clubs and programs over in England. So we would go there, and then also. Um, in Holland and Belgium. Uh, we have connections and those those three countries, I would say, is where we've kind of focused most of our most of our time. Um, we do have a fantastic fifth year senior, Maddie Murphy, who's from Tasmania and Australia. Um, we did not go see her in person, but we had a really pr- a person that we really trusted. Uh, and then we saw a lot of video and had Maddie come here. So the international students always will come on an official visit as well. So they can get a sense for what I was like. Uh, and we really get to know them personally, but the international travel is pretty fun and hockey is 
a huge sport, especially over in Europe um, and, and even down, down in Argentina and Brazil and Chile. Uh, so we're, we were really looking forward to getting back to traveling internationally. Yeah, that's really cool. Now, so field hockey is normally a fall sport. Y'all played in the spring. What has that turnaround been like for this team? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, uh, I, th- I think right away when the season ended in May at the Final Four, everybody was like, wow, we need a break. This has been a lot because we really did train all year thinking we're gonna, we were going to play in the fall as well. Um, and then, you know, we gave everybody a couple, couple weeks off and then really started the summer conditioning program like, you know, in the middle of June, had people come back. And we just had a really different process to how we how we train this summer to keep everyone safe, healthy, and have a buildup so we weren't burnt out by the time they got back because it was a really quick turnaround for us. Uh, but right now we're all doing well. Everybody's healthy, um, and they seem to be super excited and, and, and ready to go. Um, so we just had to tweak some things with our, our strength and conditioning program um, and just to make sure we kept everybody safe. So it worked out well. Yeah. And I noticed that this team is returning a lot of seniority, a lot of depth, especially you Anta is like the first person that comes to mind, of course, yep. big 10 defensive player of the year and big 10 player of the year. And then you've got, like you said, I think Maddie Murphy, yep. Grace, your goalkeeper. Yep. Can you maybe touch on some of these senior players and what they bring to this team specifically? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what's uh, really awesome and kind of crazy is that we actually have 11 fourth and fifth year players that are in the program right now. And some of them will still be in the program for another two years because they'll all be taking their COVID year, (laughs) which is going to be really interesting. So, yeah, I mean, our super seniors that are back, Maddie Murphy, I mean, three-time All-American, um, our kind of energizer bunny on the field. She's our go-to goal scorer um, and just a wonderful all-around person that really gets this team going all the time. Um, Ellie Holly, another super senior, she's from England, um, was an All-American as well, just really is savvy on the field, had a lot of assists and goals and really set up, um, you know, our scoring and our, and our offense going forward. Nikki Freeman, super senior, um, plays more in our midfield and deep defense, really simple player, super poised, but doesn't come off the field. So she's really fit. Um, and she, she makes a lot happen in our midfield. And then Emily Duell is the last super senior forward, um, comes in and out of the game, um, a team captain and really does a lot of the work off the field with keeping the group together and keeping our dynamic going and our, and our culture going as as well um and then you know uh, w- there's so many other fourth year players grace mcguire in goal onto nizel like you said big 10 player of the year which i think uh, the coaches around the country are trying to they keep asking us when are anta and loca graduating like why are they still here <laughs> they call them the tall trees in the backfield because they're you know both six feet tall and they have such an imposing presence and they just have been starters and mainstays in our defense for the last three years so we couldn't feel luckier that they're they're still on the team and then they're leading us forward yeah that's awesome and loca and sophie loca has a sister on the team yes. and so is that like something that's common is you'll bring in like uh two sisters especially if they're abroad yeah sure i know it's kind of unique we actually have had a lot of sisters go through iowa field hockey and uh Loka and Sophie Stribos, their actually older sister, Marika, played for us uh, in, two, graduated in 2009. So that's kind of how that got started. We went over to Belgium, a former Hawkeye who was a coach at another institution who lived in Belgium for a bunch of years was like, hey, you guys need to see this family. They're awesome. Marika's a great player. So we flew, flew over there. And at the time, Sophie and Loka were like, I don't know, six and seven years old, you know, <laughs> and we got to meet them and, and Marika came to Iowa, had a fantastic experience. And then we kept our tabs on Loka and Sophie and they were just really developed. And now they're, you know, key parts to our team right now. And we also have another set of sisters on the team, uh, Nikki Freeman and Sammy Freeman. So a senior and a sophomore and they're from New Jersey, um, great family. And they're both doing really well as well. I also noticed you do have a player from my hometown of Fort Worth, Texas, Harper. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's where you're from. Very cool. Yes, right. so I'm from there. And I know she played at Trinity Valley, which is yeah. like a private school I almost went to for high school. It was no literally way. across the street from where I went to grade school for Worth Academy. So oh gosh, um, cool. I think there was like a brief period in time where my mom, I asked my mom, I was like, mom, I want to try to play field hockey because they get <laughs> these cool uniforms. 
and like I don't know I guess like we couldn't find a team or something yeah. so, like, oh my I know well there. hockey and talking in, te- in Texas has really grown and Harper like what a gem let me tell you she was a big time actually college soccer recruit and ended oh, up coming wow. played field hockey too came to a couple of our summer camps and we kind of talked her into like hey you should take a look into college field hockey came to Iowa and literally she is one of our most fit athletes. She's so fast and strong. Um, and that helped her get in the lineup right away last year. And she was a little bit of a secret weapon as a freshman in our backfield. Um, a lot of teams didn't know who she was and they were like, who is this player? And she's from Texas. What's going on? You know? <laughs> yeah. so, uh, it was actually pretty awesome. And so we're going to keep going back to Texas to find some of those gems. Right. That's so cool. Um, of course you lost a heartbreaker this past season, in the final four. And I know that this is the same, what it was UNC, that same team that you lost to the year before. Um, what's difficult about facing that UNC team and like, what, how are you adjusting and like, what did you learn from that game? Yeah. Great question. I mean, we, First of all, we open the season every year against UNC in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And then the last couple of years, we've seen them in the Elite Eight. And as you mentioned, in the Final Four, um, you know, they have an unbelievable tradition, very similar to ours, just with a lot more national championships. Um, and really, they have what's given them the most recent success is they have the best player in the country, um, hands down, um, probably one of the best players in the world in Aaron Matson unbelievable hands she can make plays at will and score goals and they find themselves in situations where they're down and out and she can turn the game around in a second so you know we've we've learned a lot from playing um north carolina and i i will say they probably really do not like to play iowa very much because it is a really close match um and it's quite a battle um but you know we had we have to be able to put goals on the board when we play them in a timely fashion. I mean, in that final four game, we had the momentum in the first two quarters and we just didn't find a way to have the goals go in basically. And if we would, the the tide would have really changed. Um, But we, we play them really well defensively and have a great, great game plan going forward. We just have to seize our opportunities and that'll be all the difference. I'm curious who are going to be your toughest matchups in the big 10 this year. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, first and foremost, Northwestern is going to be fantastic. They returned some key players and then they, they added um, two really key transfers from Princeton who were all Americans and, and national team members. And so they, I mean, we scrimmaged them this weekend and they were missing a couple players because of they were at a U.S. event, but Northwestern will absolutely be a contender in the big 10 this year. Um, Michigan will as well. They were also in the final four Michigan and they're, they're returning everyone um, really of the nine teams in the big 10, six are going to be probably ranked in the top 12. Wow. So it, it's going to be a battle. Um Every team, it's going to be close. And I would say probably Northwestern, Michigan, um, and Penn State are going to be some of our biggest matchups. Yeah. But, and you have this weekend, you have a couple of like opening season yeah. Big Ten ACC challenge matchups. Yeah. Um, what can you tell fans to expect from these kinds of matchups that are coming up? I think Wake Forest, I saw, was on the schedule. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'll tell you, the Big Ten ACC Challenge, it is the premier tournament in college field hockey, and this is, I want to say, like the 21st year of it. So Iowa, UNC, Wake Forest, and Michigan, four coaches agreed a really long time ago to start this tournament, um, and it's, it stayed the same every opening weekend. North Carolina will be ranked one, Wake Forest will be in the top ten. Michigan and Iowa should both be in the top five. So it is going to be, the games are going to be highly competitive. Um, we're, we're rooting big 10 all the way. This is where us and Michigan kind of join together um, and really, really pull for each other, but you'll see a lot of fast paced hockey with high level tactics and high level skills. And I really encourage anyone who hasn't seen field hockey. This is the time to come out and watch it because you're going to be seeing it at the highest level. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, football hasn't started yet either. So people have time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Football yeah, has not I started. Mean, come on, like, exactly. let's go, go to the field hockey game. What yeah, did you learn not. from your, what else did you learn from your scrimmage matchup um, yeah. with Northwestern this past weekend? Yeah, we, we learned a lot. So we played two, two scrimmages on Friday. We had a chance to get everybody in the match, um, see a lot of different combinations. So it was great to see kind of where some of our, our freshmen will land positionally. 
um, and then to see, you know, what areas we've improved on from, from last, from last year. And I'll tell you, we feel like our defense is still very strong. Um, we build the ball really well. We def definitely won the possession battle. Um, it's just, we need to be able to finish. <laughs> so we want to be able to, to seize our opportunities and just clean up some of the, the opportunities in our final third and really get, you know, some goals on the board as early as we can in a game. And I think if we can do that, uh, we'll be lethal again because it's going to be hard for, for teams to penetrate our defense. Yeah, certainly. Um, I'm kind of intrigued by the, the position of goalkeeper, which has to be like super tough yeah. um, in field hockey. And I'm wondering like, what are the keys to being a successful goalkeeper in your sport? Yeah. Great. Um, I love this question. Um, so first and foremost, you have to be able to be, a, a fantastic organizer. It's basically, you have to be able to organize chaos. Okay. So you have to be able to take in information and right away, like very specifically and urgently organize the, de the defense. Um, and you also have to have really thick skin. So, you know, there's basically as a goalkeeper, you really never win the game, but you can always lose it. At least that's how you feel <laughs> when you're in the goal. Um, so being able to bounce back from a mistake or a goal that goes in is key. So the mental the mental toughness piece. Um, and then I joke with the team all, all the time. And I don't think it's actually a joke, but you, you're, you are one of the most athletic people on the field. Um, cause the skill set re requires strength and speed and quickness, um, and just techniques that are, are, are really different than obviously any of the, any of the field players. So you, it, we play with a big shooting circle that's 16 yards. Um, so you have to be able to cover ground. Um, and then you also have to be able to sit in there and have balls that are being fired at you, you know, 50, 60, 70 miles per hour. Right. And kind of a no fear attitude. Um, but the organization and like kind of being the quarterback of the defense is, is key. And I'm curious, you know, what makes like Anta and the defense position, what makes her such like a standout player? Yeah, great question. She first and foremost, her poise. Okay. She is so poised. She really doesn't get rattled. If she does, you can't tell because <laughs> she's under a lot of pressure from really fast, speedy forwards and front field players. Um, her distribution, just her ability to be able to see passes, you know, 75 yards down the field or even just really short, she can give a very precise ball. Um, and her on ball defense, just her ability to tackle while she's running in transition and um, fantastic anticipator. So she really reads the plays well ahead before, you know, the actual play even develops and can intercept um, and start our attack. And, and she, her, her, her presence is, is unbelievable. And I, and I will say like, within our backfield, Loka and Harper, you know, they really also help set onto up for success as well. She knows she can rely on two very like-minded, like skilled players. So they play really well together as a trio. That's awesome. Um, for the people who may not be as familiar with the sport of field hockey, yeah. what are like stat lines that are things that like you pay attention to when you're like examining your team and your players and evaluating it. Yeah. Great. I mean, we definitely pay attention to, you know, the offensive opportunities that we can draw, like the stats that they keep are, you know, sh shots on goal, penalty corners earned, obviously goals. Um, that's really what the public would see. They don't see much else for us, for our team. Um, really what shots are we giving up? What penalty corners are we giving up defensively? And obviously, you know, how many goals have we given up in the game? And for coaches too, we really look at our possession. Um, and that's not something that a normal person would see on a stat line, um, but we can track it with our video analysis and all of that. And, and if you can have more possession in the game of hockey, obviously you're going to have more opportunities going forward, which lead to those offensive, offensive goals and, and opportunities going forward. So and do assists work like the similar way as like ice hockey, where it's like not just the person before, but the person before the person and like that there's two people that assist like a goal. Yeah, for sure. In different situations. Yeah, there is. I mean, definitely on a penalty corner, like a set play, you know, two people would assist because there's a, someone who pushes in the ball, who traps it and then who hits it in the field of play. It's typically just 
one assist because you lead a pass and you can only shoot inside the circle, but there are similarities. I mean, for most people who don't know field hockey, it's probably most similar like tactically to soccer, right. except for playing on AstroTurf and you can't like kick the ball up in the air and wait, <laughs> you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's very fast paced and there's not many dead ball opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It's always, it's always good to like kind of review that and as I was watching I was like learning a little bit more about it and it's just one of those sport like any other sport you have it takes a while most people are usually like why so many whistles why do they keep blowing the whistle there but you know there's certain pieces of like if the ball hits your foot or if it's not in the penalty circle like it doesn't count for a shot or a goal things like that but I really do think the more you watch it yeah you, you definitely pick up some subtleties and like you do have to keep the ball on one side of the stick right Yes, which is makes it very technical. So you're constantly turning your hands over. I mean, most people who try it, they're like, wow, this is, they don't realize how difficult it is. I think two years ago, we had the Iowa basketball team out. They wanted like, and we're, they're like our brother, sister sport. And we gave them a stick and man, they were like, what? This is impossible. And plus they're trying to like bend over, you know, cause you're actually bent over the entire time with the ball out in front of you, but it was pretty fun to watch. Yeah. yeah, I was going to, yeah, it does seem like you're kind of hunched over a little yeah. bit. <laughs> you're trying to run fast with your legs bent with the ball out in front and like do some pretty handy skills. So yeah, Dang. pretty crazy. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine having to tra- train that kind of stuff. I think, I think stuff. We'll, have to, we'll have to get you out. I mean, come on, let's see the Texas girl with a stick. I'm, I'm curious. You know what? Let's go. Like, let's do it. <laughs> oh, we'll put, we'll catch it on video. It'll be a comedy. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think I can tell tell that you'd probably be very aggressive and feisty. So I'm I'm, I'm looking oh. forward to that. Let's do I mean, it. I would be good at that. That's why I had to I had to quit soccer at one point because I just kept like I just kept like colliding with everybody. And my mom was like, "This is not tackle football. Like you gotta like <laughs> I love gotta it. chill, you know." And I don't know. I guess I was an angry child, but <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I love uh, it. Well, Lisa, this has been so fun. We'll have to get some players on the podcast mid season and do a full check in, but best of luck this weekend and Hawkeye fans check out the field hockey team this weekend they're at home they got three games Is it- we have two games two games, two games. They'll, okay. they'll, be, they'll all be top 10 matchups so please come out and check it out and Leah thanks so much you're a fantastic follow on Twitter and love that you're covering Hawkeye sports literally so you know appreciate your interest in field hockey really do for sure all right y'all well thank you for listening to the on iowa podcast i'm leah van you can follow my coverage at thegazette.com and y'all have a good one